Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Marek Kolshevsky, uh, and I'm with the Cello Ecosystem. I work at C-Labs uh, and Valora. Uh, and I'm gonna be talking today about um, this talk called Mobile First Equals People First. And uh, if you like this talk, uh, definitely uh, check me out on Twitter. I'm Marek underscore. You don't have to spell my last name, uh, which hopefully you guys will appreciate. Cool, so uh, if you're new to Cello, uh, maybe you haven't seen our mission. Uh, we have this, um, I would say, pretty beautiful mission uh, that we're all working towards, uh, which is to build a financial system that creates the conditions for prosperity for everyone. Uh, and it's really exciting uh, to say uh, that I think we're slowly uh, actually executing against this mission and, and finally starting to put a dent against this. Uh, here you can see uh, a bunch of users uh, of the ecosystem all throughout the world. Uh, and I wanted to start this talk just by sharing a little bit about what's going on in the chain, what are some real world usage of the actual protocol that is just beyond you know, the traditional DeFi and NFT stuff that is also happening on Celo, uh, but um, is perhaps a little less new to, to the audience here today. And so the first story I wanted to share is about a person named Lucy. Uh, Lucy uh, lives in a informal settlement in Nairobi in Kenya. Uh, and uh, things have been pretty hard lately with COVID. Um, she uh, is no longer employed full time. Uh, and so when she heard that Mercy Corps was teaming up with a company called Corsali um, to provide micro work uh, and to do a, a pilot around using cryptocurrencies to do micro work in Kenya. Uh, she got excited, she signed up, uh, and she started using Corsali to, to start doing micro work on her phone. Uh, one of the really nice things about Corsali is that it pays you in Cello dollars straight away after each micro task that you perform. So you know straight away that you're making real money as you're uh, doing the micro work, uh, and you know what the fees are, uh, you know how long it takes to get paid, uh, and you don't have to worry about, you know, working for a couple of weeks and then finding out that uh, PayPal takes, you know, up to 30% to, to transfer funds into Kenya. Um, and so she likes this a lot. Uh, she's been using Kursali ever since. And one of the really nice things about Kenya is that there's a company called Kotani Pay that allows you to actually convert your cello dollars uh, that folks are earning uh, using Corsali into M-Pesa so she can actually use it day-to-day -day for her day-to-day -day spending. Um, and so, so this is exciting. This is uh, a real example of people actually working and getting paid overseas uh, on the blockchain, being settled uh, all on a public blockchain. Uh, Fernando's the, the next example. Fernando lives in uh, Brazil in Laura de Freitas. He is a UBI recipient of a protocol called Impact Market. If you guys haven't seen Impact Market, I highly recommend checking them out. You can go to impactmarket.org uh, and donate funds to them. You can think of them as a, a crypto-based give directly. Uh, they're able to raise funds, they've raised millions of dollars, and then disperse them to folks all over the world. Uh, and one of these recipients is Fernando. Uh, who heard about Impact Market uh, from his community. He went on to uh, one of these community onboarding sessions uh, where he was um, um, educated about the program and um, where he installed both the Impact Market mobile app and the Valora mobile app, the wallet, um, and started receiving on the order of 40 cents a day from Impact Market. Now, at first, he didn't trust this. He was like, what, what is this? Um, and he went straight to the community organizer and cashed out every day his 40 cents. Uh, but over time, he started to realize that every time he went to cash it out, he was able to get uh, real Brazilian hard currency from it. Uh, and so he started to trust it a lot more. And so over time, he started holding a balance um, and, and actually uh, using it at the end of the week to buy groceries. Uh, and one of the reasons why um, he's able to do that is because as this currency started to circulate in this community, 
Uh, local merchants also started getting interested in acquiring it. Um, it's being dispersed in cello dollars, which uh, um, is a good inflation hedge in Brazil. Uh, and also, Valora offers some additional incentives for holding a balance. And so people in this community started getting excited, and they started to also want to hold it, uh, which meant that they started accepting it. And so now he can buy groceries at the end of the week. Uh, he uses a QR code to scan it. This is a real photo of him making a purchase here on the right. Uh, and it wasn't long before the whole community started using Valora um, the way that you and I use uh, Venmo here in the US. Um, and he started, and they started just transacting and settling these transactions all on a blockchain. Folks got excited, they painted a mural. Um, they even tried to organize a fair, uh, but COVID put a damper on that. Um, uh, they got hit by another wave and, and the lockdown um, ended up canceling those plans. But the mural is amazing uh, and uh, it's just so heartwarming to see uh, folks actually using blockchains to settle transactions day to day, again, the way that you and I use something like Venmo. Uh, the last example brings us to the Philippines. Uh, there's actually been a number of programs in the Philippines, uh, one by Impact Market that we're going to talk about today, uh, but also others by the Grameen Foundation with funds from JP Morgan. Um, in this particular case, uh, Impact Market went into uh, this community um, Paioy in the Philippines, um, where Faring, a 67-year-old weaver uh, who ended up um, having to stop weaving uh, because of COVID, was able to actually restart her weaving profession uh, and, and start um, selling her, her craft again. And one of the really, I would say, heartwarming uh, things about this story is that um, at first, she was able to, uh, to use her UBI to, uh, to rebuy all of the equipment that she needed to start weaving again. Uh, but as she got more comfortable, as the broader community that she was in got more comfortable with digital payments, uh, she was actually able to start selling her craft online using a service called Paychant uh, and start selling it to other people online. And so by receiving this UBI using a crypto-based digital wallet, uh, she was able to then um, actually get comfortable with selling online and receiving those payments electronically overseas, which obviously in these days with COVID uh, was uh, just really life-changing, especially since tourism just completely tanked in her community. And so all of these things that I talked about today, that they're, they're possible because we... Uh, we're at a stage now where this reality of a global Venmo is actually starting to become possible. So uh, when I started Cello about four and a half years ago with my co-founders, uh, this was the vision that we were hoping to create. Uh, we, we really believe that there will come a time when the ability to send value to anybody anywhere in the world will become as easy as it is today for us to communicate with anyone in the world. If you think about it, you know, a couple of years ago, it's actually not that long ago, it wasn't actually that easy to for free send a text message to anybody in, in the world, to any phone number in the world. And you know, WhatsApp really changed that. WhatsApp came and uh, pretty much anywhere in the world, you don't have to worry about whether you have to pay for it. Uh, if you communicate with that person ahead of time and have them set it up, you know pretty much that anywhere where they are, you'll be able to message them for free and stay in touch. And so the same, we believe, is going to be true for value, where you won't even have to think about it. Anybody you're in contact list, you'll be able to uh, send value to. And with that, all of the things that we just saw today, all of those um, amazing examples of, of people earning a living, uh, receiving uh, a UBI, um, will become possible fully globally. Um, and so fast forward to today, uh, we have that wallet. It's called Valora. Uh, if you haven't tried Valora, I highly recommend checking it out. Uh, it's available at valoraapp.com. Uh, and it's a crypto wallet that really is designed to be a fully decentralized Venmo. Uh, you can send value to anyone in the world, and you can send it not just to public key-derived addresses, but you can send it to people in your contact list using their phone number as an identifier. And best of all, you can do all of this in a fully decentralized way. 
And more importantly, you can actually pay for those transaction fees with the stable coins that you're actually trying to send. And so again, if you haven't tried Valora, I highly recommend checking it out. Um, it's really easy to use, and you can earn additional 25% um, APY-like rewards simply by installing it and holding a balance. And so maybe this is obvious to this audience, but you know, when, I, when I talk about Celo, when I talk about Valora, uh, I frequently get asked, um, you know, it, this kind of makes sense, but uh, why are you focusing on smartphones? Shouldn't you guys be focusing on feature phones? Isn't the, the majority of the world using feature phones? And it turns out that that's actually not quite right. So if you look at the Ericsson Mobility Report, um, there are now 8 billion mobile phones in the world uh, with active mobile subscriptions. This does not include IoT devices. These are just mobile devices. And 75% of those are actual smartphones. So the number is actually quite staggering. Six billion smartphones in the world that exist today that have active mobile subscriptions. And so we're building for those six billion smartphones. Uh, and that number keeps growing, of course. And then the second uh, thing that I get frequently asked is, well, what about connectivity? Uh, is there enough connectivity out there? Um, you know, using a blockchain, typically requires more connectivity than just doing a Web2 product. Uh, and the answer on that front is absolutely. Again, if you look at the, the Ericsson Mobility Report, you see that connectivity is just exploding. Um, by the end of the year, 5G subscriptions will pass um, 600 million uh, people. Uh, subscriptions, and in four years, over 90% of all spectrum will be pretty much 3G or better, uh, which is certainly fast enough for all Web3 related um, kind of uh, mobile needs. So that's exciting. Um, and so, and so. We talked a little bit about some example use cases uh, of Celo. Uh, we've talked a little bit about Valora and, and the mobile wallet. But you might be asking, you know, what is all of this running on? What is uh, Celo exactly? Uh, and the answer is it's an it's a EVM chain plus uh, plus. It's fully decentralized. It has a really elegant proof of stake protocol. Uh, but it has a bunch of additional features that uh, really, I would say, make it quite unique. And so what are those features? Uh, what are the plus pluses, so to speak? Um, there are really three things that enable kind of this decentralized Venmo experience. Uh, the first is stable value currencies. So similar to Terra, Celo has these native stable coins uh, built into the platform. Um, three stable coins right now. We've got the Celo dollar, the Celo euro, and the Celo Brazilian real. These are all implemented as tokens on the platform. But unlike on other chains, you can actually pay for transaction fees with tokens on Celo. Uh, and so this is quite elegant. So when um, Impact Market is sending a payment, for example, to Lucy, um, say, using Valora, and they're sending Celo dollars, uh, they can actually send that and pay for that transaction fee in Celo dollars itself. And so from a usability perspective, that's really quite amazing. Um, the other feature that's quite nice is uh, around addresses. Uh, so if you look at um, pretty much every wallet today, um, people are typically expected to uh, transact with public key derived addresses. Uh, these are very, very intimidating, as uh, I'm sure all of you know, for your typical consumer. And so if you want to build the WhatsApp of money that's available for anyone in the world, uh, they're just simply going to be way too complicated. And ENS helps address this a little bit, but I would argue that ENS is still too complicated for uh, your average uh, non-crypto savvy person. And so Celo uses phone numbers, which many people in the world are comfortable with, and has a decentralized phone verification protocol that allows you to uh, actually send money to anybody's phone number, which means you can send money to anybody in your contact list. So here's an example of me sending money to Vitalik. Uh, I can you know, just look him up by typing his name. And I can find his phone number in my contact list. Uh, and then just with a tap of a finger, uh, I can look him up and send the payment to him. Don't try to write down the phone number. Vitalik will get very upset. 
uh, and then I'm going to have to tell you that that's not really his phone number, uh, and so just don't do it. One of the really nice things about doing decentralized phone verification is that you can actually also send money to people's phone numbers even without the recipient having a wallet, which is really, again, quite unique. Web2 product protocols do this um, all the time, but it's totally impossible today in Web3. Uh, with Celo, you can send a payment to a phone number that isn't yet on the chain, and the wallet can easily just put the money in an escrow smart contract uh, and then uh, have the funds uh, be pulled from that escrow smart contract when you verified your phone number. And the final thing is around like clients. If you want to have a WhatsApp of money that's available, or WhatsApp for money that's available globally, it has to be censorship resistant. It has to be surveillance resistant. Uh, if it's going to be the de facto wallet that everyone's using anywhere in the world, uh, it has to use a like client protocol. It can't just connect through Infura. And so Celo has a really efficient like client protocol. It's 17,000 times lighter than Ethereum. Uh, and then there's a new ZK Snark based version that's even 1.5, 1.7 million times lighter. Um, and so that's the way we get to uh, full decentralization on your mobile phone. You don't have to trust a third party RPC server. So that's a little bit about, about Celo. Uh, you might be asking what's new in the ecosystem. Uh, and you know, probably the biggest news right now that, that you guys might be interested in hearing is, is what I shared yesterday on the main stage. Uh, which is that Kickstarter is coming. Um, Kickstarter announced um, a, two months ago that they are going to decentralize themselves. Super exciting news. Uh, and even more exciting for the Celo community is the fact that they have chosen Celo uh, as an ecosystem that they're going to do it on. Uh, absolutely um, just bonkers. We're really excited. Um, and definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, the second news is that we're working really hard uh, to be able to uh, process the kind of transaction load that comes uh, with uh, someone like Kickstarter uh, running on Celo. Uh, and so really, really stoked that Mistin Labs has joined the Celo ecosystem. If, if you haven't heard of Mistin Labs yet, they're an amazing company started by a whole bunch of ex-Novi, DM, and Facebook uh, engineers and researchers. Um, they're working really hard with C-Labs uh, to bring a bunch of really amazing innovation to the Celo blockchain. Uh, the first is around Narwhal, which is a really exciting new mempool protocol uh, that they're introducing uh, to the Celo consensus protocol. That's going to be much more data efficient than what's going on today. Uh, there's also a lot of work being done uh, for faster batch signature verification. A uh, whole bunch of pipelining being worked on, uh, as well as uh, additional consensus changes. And uh, also, uh, move side-by-side -side move support. So Celo is fully EVM compatible, uh, but uh, they're also working to add move support uh, so that you can write smart contracts in either languages. Um, all of this uh, will result, uh, hopefully, in Celo being one of the fastest EVM chains out there. Um, if you combine Narwhal and Tusk using real-world latencies on a network that spans the entire planet, uh, they're able to get 140,000 uh, TPS uh, pretty easily. So that's starting to get uh, at, at kind of Solana-level uh, throughput uh, for an EVM chain. So that's really, really exciting. Uh, Solana-level throughput um, with really high levels of decentralization uh, with an EVM chain. The other big news is that Celo Real launched. So this is a stablecoin pegged to the Brazilian Real, which is um, a currency in a country where, where Celo sees a lot of users. Uh, Valora actually, uh, its second most popular country right now is Brazil. So this is super exciting. Uh, a whole bunch of stuff is going on there with payments. You can use Celo Real to buy your McDonald's. You don't have to work there. You can use your crypto to buy there. Uh, and there's debit cards and a whole bunch of other things that are on the ground. If you are ever going to Brazil, highly recommend uh, checking that out. Uh, Valora recently also added a DAP browser. Again, if you haven't tried Valora, check it out. Uh, if you're curious what kind of DeFi and NFT and other things are going on on the platform, uh, the DAP browser is a great way to discover it. 
Uh, and finally, Cello's uh, second hard fork is right around the corner, which will bring it up uh, in line with the last Ethereum hard fork. Um, so keep an eye out for that. It's only a few weeks away. And I lied. There's one more thing, uh, which is that Ethereum, sorry, Etherscan is coming. Uh, for a lot of developers in the audience, obviously Etherscan is a must. Uh, and so keep an eye out for that. Uh, Cello Etherscan is around a month or so away. Uh, the team there has been working really hard. So if you want to get involved, uh, I have just a few quick resources uh, for you to look at. Uh, the number one is this boilerplate code, uh, which uh, I think you guys will all really like. It, it has all the code that you need to connect to wallets. It has all the code you need to use uh, uh, graphs, subgraphs, uh, and to deploy smart contracts um, using hard hat. Uh, if you want to start a company, check out CelloCamp batch five. Uh, these guys, I can't believe they're on their fifth batch. Uh, it's an incredible incubator program. A bunch of amazing companies came out of that. Think of this as a, as a Y Combinator for the Cello ecosystem. Um, and if you want to get your dApp into Valora, now's the time. Um, there's a competition called the Valora Bake Off. Highly recommend taking a look at that as well. And then the final, final thing uh, that I think you guys might be potentially interested in. Um, Celo is running its first ecosystem conference in Brazil uh, at the beginning of April, April 4th and 5th, during the um, blockchain week in Barcelona. Uh, early bird tickets just sold out today, I'm really sorry to say, uh, but there's still a bunch of tickets left, uh, so definitely check it out. Uh, Mila Kunis will be speaking, uh, as will uh, a bunch of different uh, really incredible builders. So take, uh, take a look at that. It's just celloconnect.com. So that's everything from me. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I'll stick around if you have any questions.